yo yo people are going welcome back to Ron Stack Hub and as you can see in my hand today I'm going to be speaking to you guys about the B loader so this is not the B loader pro but the original B loader some people had a few issues with this so I'm gonna do the entire setup process again first things first go to Google and type in B loader all one word after that you're gonna come up against this website here simply go to the B loader website the first link you see this is the website of the actual B loader now all you need to do is to go to download. You're going to have two options here, B-Loader Pro and B-Loader. B-Loader is just the original B-Loader, just a normal one. I'm going to put that one on screen now. That's the normal B-Loader. The B-Loader Pro is the bigger one. So for this video, I'm going to show B-Loader. Go to download, scroll down slightly, and you will see this download link here. Both these files are exactly the same thing. Now, this has been recorded on the 7th of april 2023 so as of this date 7th of april 2023 two downloads here i'm going to click on the first one it's going to start downloading but i think what's going to happen is google is going to scan it and it's going to come up as unsafe so for you to actually keep the file click on the tiny arrow next to discard it's going to come up with keep and learn more simply select keep it's going to finish the download now I need to go to that location and extract the file. So click on the arrow again and go show in folder. Now, if you're using a completely different web browser to me, it doesn't matter. Simply open up your, your file browser, click on where it says downloads on the left and you'll get to exactly the same location. So you're going to right click on this. I'm using windows 11. So it comes up with extract all. If you're using windows 10, this is what you'll see. I'm going to go show more options. If you're using Windows 10, this is the options you'll see. And it's going to be extract all still. So exactly the same option, but just looks slightly different. This window is going to come up and you're just going to select extract. It's going to extract it in the same location where the downloaded file is. It's going to create a new folder and put all the contents in there. So I'm going to click extract. Now, this is the original file I downloaded. I'm going to delete this one for now, just so I don't get confused. I'm going to simply double click on where it says manager driver open that folder so again these are all the files that were extracted the readme let me just put that to the left and put this to the right the readme file says i should run that file to install the driver first i'm going to double click on where it says manager driver 1.0 then double click on the actual file inside of there now ideally you're supposed to turn off your antivirus and do all that extra stuff but normally uh, this might not show on my screen recorder but it says windows protected your pc there's going to be a blue window that pops up. The very last thing it says is more info and there's a line under it. Click on more info. And when you click on that, the option is going to come up that says run anyway. I'm going to click on run anyway. It's going to come up with another dialog box. Uh, do you want to allow this app um, from this publisher to make unknown changes? So on and so forth. I'm going to click yes. You should do, do the same. Whether to install the driver. If it fails, please temporarily exit the protection tool. All that means is if this fails, it's most likely your third party or even your Windows antivirus that's blocking or anti malware program that's blocking this from working properly. So all you then need to do is to deactivate that temporarily and do what you need to do. Now, I don't know if this is malware that's been installed on your PC. So please, please do this with a lot of caution. I believe Windows 11 and Windows 10 Pro, they have this um, thing where you can actually run a virtual machine of Windows 10 and Windows 11 inside the OS without installing anything else. If you're super, super scared, figure out how to do that. If not, I'm just going to click yes for me because there's nothing really massively important on my computer. Uh, okay, let's just click next. See what happens. Finish. It says it's ready. So I'm going to click finish. Now, hopefully that's been installed. Step number two says we need to hold pair button of B loader and insert into PC. So again, this is just a normal B loader. It only has one single button on there. So I'm going to press this button. Let's see if I can click it and you guys can hear it. That's the button being clicked there. I'm going to press that button, hold it down and insert this into a USB port on my laptop. You do the exactly the same thing. Once I plug it in and I hear that sound, I release it. And the light that comes up on the B loader looks like whitish bluish light then it says run manager 1.3 to config or update so i'm going to go to super manager 1.3 double click on the folder that's the file there double click on that and let's see what comes up 
Now again, I have that um, blue dialog thing that pops up that says Windows protected your PC. I'm going to click on more info. I'm going to click on run anyway. Now you need to be sure that you want to do this. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? I'm going to select yes. Now perfect, straight away it says B loader found. So the driver thing worked perfectly fine for me, but I have seen instances where this doesn't work for people. Now I cannot show how to fix that because I've never had that issue on my Windows 10 PC, on my Windows 11 PC. I've used a Dell XPS before, now I'm using a Legion 5 Pro. I've never seen that issue, so I'm really sorry I won't be able to help with that part. Let's see if there's an update available. So I'm going to go to upgrade first, select upgrade firmware. So if I select that, actually, let me quickly look through the download I have. Let's see, below the normal firmware. Uh, let's see what's in here. Let's try that one there. OK, so I'm going to go to select upgrade firmware. It's going to open a browse window. I'm going to go to downloads. I'm going to go to the folder I extracted before. So below the update and config. I'm going to go to below the normal firmware because there's nothing else on here that would indicate that the firmware is somewhere else. Double click on that. I'm going to click on where it says below the Wi-Fi because this version we're using is a Wi-Fi model. It doesn't actually have an Ethernet port. LAN would be the below the Pro. So I'm going to double click on this one. Click on update bin. Hopefully I don't brick it. I'm going to click on open and then that option is now grayed out. I'm going to click on upgrade and let's see what happens. The light on my below the is flashing red at the moment. So that tells me something is happening. Perfect update success. And it just kicks me out straight away. I'm going to click on configuration now. First things first, click here to set up your PSN account. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Click on that link. It's going to take me to the PlayStation website. And on this website, I'm going to be able to log in. So that's my email address I've put in there. I'm going to obviously black that out. I'm going to click next, put my password in as well. Now I have two factor authentication on my PlayStation account and I believe a few accounts as well. Something I would highly recommend by the way. After that's now done, it says redirect. That's fine. Perfect. I'm going to go to the very top web address. So click into that section once with your left click. It highlights everything. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go to where it says copy or cut. Either one is fine, but I'm going to do copy. So I simply go back to the below the app and it says for step two, click here after successful copy. And it's going to then put in the ID it needs. I'm going to click on that. It's going to do what it needs to do. The ID is going to pop up in the right hand corner. Now I am going to try and block this out as best as I can. The next step is to put in my Wi-Fi name. This is the same Wi-Fi name you look for on your mobile devices, your laptop, your tablets, your TVs, everything. So for me, I'm going to put mine in. The password needs to be the same password you type in to connect your mobile phones, your laptops and everything to your network. So I'm going to put my name in. Just bear with me a second. Perfect. So after I've put in my Wi-Fi details, I'm going to jump onto my PlayStation 5. On my PlayStation 5, I'm going to go to settings at the very top. After I go into settings, I'm going to go down to where it says system. I'm going to go into system. Now, after that, I'm going to go down to where it says remote play. Um, once I have remote play enabled, so there's a toggle right there on the right. I'm going to go down to where it says link device. And on the link device, you're going to have an eight digit code. That's what you're going to type into that very last box at the bottom. So my eight digit code, I'm going to type in now. Once I've typed in my eight digit code, all I then have to do is to click save. It says configuration successful and I am pretty much finished. I'm going to close the B loader manager at this point because I'm done with this now. And then I'm going to unplug the B loader from my laptop. You heard that sound. I'm going to plug this into my PS5 and simply wait for it to connect using remote play.